Banton with another great podcast for you today. We got the boys in the studio today. Pablo, Al, and Justin are going to be joining us in a few minutes, and we're going to talk all about fishing and what's going on and what's coming up and how exciting it is that we're finally going to have some decent weather, for goodness sakes. Enough of this rain, enough of this south wind, enough of this cold. I just got to go up and see Al Clowers and hang out with him and his family up at his house. And I'll tell you what, I was freezing every day. I picked a hell of a time to not wear underwear. It was incredible. It was so cold up there. It got all the way down into the to the low 60s. I was freezing to death. I had to borrow clothes from Al because I was so cold. But now I'm back down here in Cabo and I'm sweating. The air conditioner's on and the world is right again. It's Promar Ahi USA Monday. We talk about Promar products on Monday. We're going to stop the show in the middle and show you a couple of Promar products that you must have on your boat. So pay attention to that. And uh, we got that that show coming up at the uh, Ventura Fairgrounds here. The uh, West Coast Outdoors Sport Fishing Expo. Gang. I told, like we told everybody on Friday, if you show up wearing one of our shirts or one of our hats, your saltwater guide shirt or your saltwater guide hat, you get in the show for free. That does that's pretty bitching. Most of you already have the hats and the shirts. If you don't have the hats or the shirts, and you're gonna go to the show in Ventura at the Ventura Fair at the Ventura Fairgrounds, make sure you grab a shirt or a hat from our website, yoursaltwaterguide.com, and you can get you can get in the show for free. I know you got a couple of weeks, so the shirt should be delivered in time to get into the show. But that's the West Coast Outdoor Sportsman's Expo at the Ventura Fairgrounds on the 2nd or, or the 3rd, 4th, and 5th of May. Just coming up in just a sh couple short weeks. So get ready for that show. It's going to be the last show before the season starts rolling along. So hopefully there's a good attendance there. And you guys get to the show and have a good time and then let us know all about it. And hopefully anybody that's going to the show, make us some videos. We're hoping Mike Lewis and uh, Sonny get to go there and represent your saltwater guide. The big problem is, though, that Sonny is so big time now being a big yacht captain and all. He, can, he barely has time for any of us. I feel very honored when Sonny answers my phone calls nowadays. It's pretty amazing. And he was supposed to be on the show today, but he must be super busy taking care of world problems that he couldn't join us today. But we have Pablo, Al, and Justin, which I am very, very happy that they're part of the team. And they're going to be jumping in here with us in just a second, gang. You can ask the guys anything you want today. We're going to open it up to questions. You can say hi to everybody. You can ask these guys anything you want to know about the upcoming season and what they got going on. But they're going to do our, their very, very best to answer your questions throughout this, and we'll jump around from guide to guide. The big thing is, gang, this is the time of year you want to learn how to use your boat. You spend all that money on all that electronics and all that cool stuff on your boat and all that great tackle, but the biggest thing you didn't do is you didn't learn how to use your boat or le you learn, learn how to fish from your boat it's super easy to get on a charter boat and go fishing and just throw your line in the water and catch a fish but where we come into effect your saltwater guide and and the guides that work with your saltwater guide is that we come with you on your boat and teach you how to fish on your very own boat and then you go put together days like a lot of our members have put together it's because they've had toolage from pablo and justin and al and Get those guys on your boat now before the season starts rolling along. Because when the season's rolling along, you're going to be catching fish. You're not going to know why. You're not going to learn anything. You want to take advantage of these guys. We're going to bring them in here. They're licensed guides, which is a huge thing. When you're hiring these fly by the seat of their pants guys, they're not, they don't have a license. They're not, they don't know what they're really doing out there on the water, but they're more than happy to take your money and go show you how to catch a giant bluefin. <laughs> but when you get down to the nitty gritty, you want to learn how to use your boat. You want to learn how to use all your electronics. You want to learn how to use all that tackle. That's where the guides come in. That's where Pablo, Justin, and Al 
come in and these guys can dial you in and teach you how to fish the back bay, teach you how to fish offshore, onshore, rock cod, lobsters, every single thing that's swimming out there. These guys are going to make sure that you catch what you're headed out to catch. Al, hello. Hi, Dave. Welcome your Saltwater Guide members and everybody else on here. Great day in San Diego. Gang. Wow. Big kudos to Al. His family took me in, gave me a place to stay, fed me. We had a great time with your wife and your daughter. Al, thank your daughter again for letting me sleep in her bed. That was a big deal, man. So I'm right. super happy that you guys did that for me. And then you let me use your car and go up and see Jay <laughs> Brewer and make a bunch of cool videos at the, at the uh, reptile house up there in Huntington Beach at Prehistoric Pets. And I also got to see my good friend, Tommy Gomes. And then you met me and Tommy down there. And we had a nice breakfast and hung out with really? Tommy for a little while, made some more bitching videos. But it was just a wonderful time. And then learning how to fish that back bay, Al, that, oh my gosh, I am so blown away that I didn't know this existed. I really feel like I cheated on myself. Gang, I want to show you a quick little clip of what Al and I did. It was insane. <laughs> And then we'll talk to Al for a little bit. Then we'll bring Pablo and Justin in. But look at this little video. Look at that bonefish, gang. I'm telling you, you don't understand. This is like one of the most sought after fish in the world. Look at that one. Right here. Unreal. Good job, Captain Al. Love Al. <laughs> Gang, you yeah. don't understand. Al told me, Dave, if you get up here right now, the tide's going to be right tomorrow. Everything, the wind, everything will be perfect. If you come, it's going to be wide open. Gang, that was an understatement. For three hours, it was nonstop. We tried to put four rods in the water. We couldn't even get the baits in the water. We were bit the whole time. The only time we weren't bit is when they ripped the bait off our hooks. And uh, then you took me and you showed me something before we got there, Al. Talk about what you showed me first, because I'd never seen that either. I saw a lot of cool stuff I'd never sure. seen. Yeah, what was really cool is taking a guy your caliber to do something he's never done. So we we, we were in the little skiff, and we can run that thing in like 80 inches of water. But So we ran over to an area where I pumped some ghost shrimp, if I don't have them already, on the boat. Um, pulled the boat up on the beach, got out, started pump, started pumping, and we got about 40 in, I don't know, 40 minutes or so. Took us a minute to get to the right little stretch. But once we got there, we were pumping two and three at a time. But yeah, it was really cool. You know, you go out. <clears throat> if if you guys hire me in a little skiff, we can do the whole gamut. You know, go out, pump shrimp, go smash them, fish for all the different bonefish, bay sharks, a little bit of halibut fishing too if they're really chomping. And then if you do a full day, which you would, you can go into the galley and have lunch. You know, so it's super cool. They have two little docks right there. Um, that are for the galley and you pull up there and you get out of the wind or whatever and go have some lunch, drink a few beers if you want, obviously not me, and then um, go back out for a few more hours. So you can get, a lot of times it's really hard to pinpoint the right tide if I'm working from 7 to 11, 11.30, 3.30. You get, you get one tide, but if you fish a full day, you, your opportunities of having both tides are great. You know, and the, you know, the middle of the bay you really don't want any wind, so you'd fish that first, and then the back bay, as long as there's good tide, it don't matter how windy it is, you know, because when an anchor, the boat will sit still, and they'll still bite. Yeah, gang, I'm telling you, listen to what Al's saying, because he's got this thing figured out. He's been doing this back there in the back bay since he was a little kid. All the stories, all the cool things I got to learn about the back bay and all the different things that are going on back there, that's why you want to go with it a guy like Al or Justin or Pablo, because you're going to get to learn history about where you're at, what you're doing. And like Al said, not that I'm anything special, but I've been fishing for a living my whole life. And I was, I I've never even seen that back Bay of San Diego. And then I asked Al, cause he, I saw he had his uh ghost shrimp pumper on the boat. And I was like, Hey, can we go catch some ghost shrimp too? He's all, <laughs> He's all, I got all the bait we need. We don't have to, I go, I've never done it before. Can we go do, I'm like a little kid. I'm like, I want to go do that. I want to do this. I wanted to do everything. It was so bitching. 
Yeah, it got me really pumped up, you know, with all the boat situation with the big boat going on. It's like, oh yeah, Dave's coming to town. Let's let's do this. It was just like a couple kids out there. It was really cool. The time spending walking with your bare feet in the water on the sand, catch, catching shrimp with no wind. It was just magical. It was cool. It was and everything cool. worked out. You know, a lot of times it works out, but sometimes it's not as good or whatever, you know, it's all tied, man. If the tides, tides, right. The fish bite. And that's no joke in the Bay. And then, you know, the next month or two is a good opportunity because offshore outside the inshore offshore zone is, you know, it's nobody really knows where the bluefin are right this second. And, um, in another couple months, it's going to be straight, pretty much offshore stuff. I'll still do some bay stuff, but but right now, springtime when they're all spawning and everything, is the time to to get them. And the water gets hot back there, and then they disperse out. You can still catch them, but it's not as condensed, you know. Yeah, uh, and then I talked to Jeanette the other day. I guess. There is a phenomenal amount of turtles back there too. Al yes. drives around very slow. He's very conscious of everything that's going. That's his house. That's where he makes. That's where he was able to feed his family for years. So he doesn't take. He doesn't go zooming around like a crazy man. But I was talking to Jeanette and a couple other people. People go back in there and just anchor up and just feed turtles. There's so much to do back there. It's just incredible. Right. We caught so many different species, Al. I was just blown away. <laughs> Yellow yeah, we, the, the only ones we didn't catch are the Corvina and the halibut. We, I mean, we probably could have caught a couple halibut, but you wanted to go into the zoo, so we had to go into the zoo and see all that other stuff. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go see that galley restaurant, too. That place is insane. It's yeah. so neat to have it right there, and they have two little docks set up just for Al to pull in and have his lunch. I mean, they got little signs on them reserved for Al Clowers. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty bitchin' deal, gang. I mean, for an outing for your children to go and do something that they'll never forget or your spouse or just yourself, if you're into fishing like I am, the whole thing is so bitchin'. And then to go and have lunch at the galley, the whole experience, you have to go try it. You have to go do it. And Al, if they have their own private boat, are you willing to come with them on their boat and show them how to do all this cool stuff? Oh, yeah, no problem. I'll show up with some bay rods and a ghost shrimp pup in a bucket and get her done. You know, a absolutely. And, you know, you're not only paying for catching fish, but you're paying for 58 years of experience. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know awesome. so it's a fast track to figuring it out. You know, in a day we can't do everything, but we can do a whole lot. And here's how special it is, gang. Pablo was like, I want to go too, Dave. I want to go. He wanted to go see it too, but I'm like, nope, this is my day. Al's taking me. I don't want to share Al with anyone. I'm he sorry. Said, That's not true. He said, you're not invited. <laughs> you would have been invited. I thought about it, but it happened so quick. Well, I was zooming all around, getting ready for him. And Once Dave said, I'm not invited, I'm like, you... <laughs> well here's my deal gang i'm kind of uh i'm kind of a selfish fisherman on the day i get to go fishing i just want to go fishing i don't want to have to tie pablo's line and untangle all this <laughs> stuff the whole time and have him asking me how do i do this and how do i do that <laughs> i'd be asking now with all due respect <laughs> and gang that's what i did let me tell you something I looked at the rigs he had, and I was like, well, I wouldn't rig that way. But you know what? I've never fished back there, so I just went with what Al had, and it worked out really well because I got a fish every time I threw my line in the water. That's all I want is a bite anyway. It was so fun. It was just incredible, Al. So thank you very much. And there's so many people driving around the cars listening. Listen, gang, Al, Pablo, and Justin, if you're waiting till June, you're like, I just want to wait till June, till everything. You're not going to have any dates. Right. These guys are getting booked up in June, July, and August. That's not what we're talking about. If you want to go learn how to do any of this cool stuff we talk about today on the show, if you want to get out there and have a day where you're going to be able to relax and there's not 10,000 boats bumping India, now's the time. From now until June, if you can get a trip in April or B 
beginning of May. You want to get out with one of these guys now and get this figured out so that when things start to happen, you'll be able to do it on your boat. You don't want to try to get Al to come out with you in June when he's got like 15 trips in a row back, back to back. And you're like, just get a couple hours to show me. It's like, that's wrong. Right now is the time, gang. So Al, anybody that's listening and those of you sitting and watching, listen to this, go slow, give them your number, give them your website so they can look. Cause then I'm going to go on and talk to Pablo. Right on. They can get a hold of me at uh, 619. 619- Eight zero zero fish, fish is three four seven four. So six one nine eight hundred fish, or you can go to my site on AutoBook or call me. Um, my my website is captainclowers.com. All right, Jason, you I know you've been out with Pablo a couple times. You want to go try this back bay thing, gang? You don't understand. It's just absolutely magical. It is so freaking cool. I had so much fun. I was, but like my buddy Dave Burr says, Al said, we were literally like two little kids, giddy giggling the whole time. Just, <laughs> it was just insane. Pablo, what do you got going on, buddy? What have you been doing? You've been out fishing. You're out having fun. You boat running good. Everything good. Yeah, everything's, everything's going great. And then uh, I was listening when Al said, hey, if you got a little skiff, I just repowered my little 17 foot Montauk. So, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, invite Al, but, um, maybe Justin, but for sure not Dave. <laughs> that that day. Yeah. There's only those two or three people, man. No, no harm, no foul, you know, but. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll get, a, we'll get you out there. And take my yeah. No, but yeah, everything's going great. Um, been fishing. Obviously the weather was kind of a bummer this last weekend and, you know, but in between the days, um, I've been going out and doing pretty good. We're, you know, getting the same stuff, you know, halibut, lingcod, good rockfish, bass. You know, that's what we've been pretty much focusing on. And, yeah, it's been a blast. It's been a re- really good time out there. Both let me show them, Let me show them this video I made for you. But don't look at the phone number. This is the wrong <laughs> number. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't look at the number. Just look. It looks like Uncle Pete with an M has a hot stick today. Peter. <laughs> His name was Michael until he corrected me. No. That's you guiding on someone's boat. You took him over to San Clemente Island, right? Yeah, that's right. We went over to San Clemente Island. That was one of the before the storm. It was a uh, it was a beautiful time out there. Um, we just the whole you know mainland side of the island. We started at uh, you know. Well, I shouldn't say exactly where, but basically, you know, we, we fished the whole front side of the island and we, we scored all kinds of stuff at the, at the spots that you can find on your saltwater guide. We hit all of those spots on the mainland side of the island and um, did well. We got some Bonita. Um, they hooked a couple yellowtail, but on really, really light tackle. Um, and the highlight was uh, surface irons for big, big calicos. I mean, they were just, I mean, almost right up on the rocks and then just reeling it in at a good speed. And they were just hitting it every single time. We got like a, like from six to eight pounds of Damn. like quite a bit of them. It was a good, it was a good time. Great trip. The reason why I showed you guys that video though, is I want you to understand, like we talked about in the beginning of the show, these guys right here are licensed from the California Fish and Wildlife to come with you on your boat and show you what they do every day on their charter. All all three of these guys own their own charter boats. Okay. All three of these guys fish for a living. All three of these guys are more than happy to show you what they know by you inviting them to come with you on your boat. There is no other operation in in California, at least that I know of, there's some shady guys without guide licenses that are doing it, but there is nobody like us. There is nobody at the level that we're at. People ask all the time, Captain Dave, how do you know when you make your game plan? You live in Cabo. How do you know what's going on out on the water? Well, first of all, gang, my family owns Dana Wharf Sport Fishing in Dana Point Harbor. So we have nine sport boats in Dana Point Harbor that run every day. So there's a pretty good chance we have an idea what's going on in that zone. And that zone's anywhere from the Coronado Islands to uh, 
Palos Verdes and San Clemente Island, Catalina, those boats are kind of out in that area and the three whale watch boats we have. So they're all getting a look at the water. Then something that no one else has, no other website, we have four licensed guides that are out on the water every day. And if they're not, it's because you guys didn't hire. No, if they're not, it's because they're starving. No, they need to work. That's what they do for a living. But they're out on the water every day fishing as long as the weather permits. So the information you're going to get from us on our game plans and our hot spots are coming from guys that fish for a living every single day. Now, I'm not going to take anything away from the other websites. They're, they are what they are, and they're there for a reason. But this is the real McCoy. This is it. It doesn't get any realer than this. Now, if you want to go and study how to read a chart and how to read the water movement on your one day, you get to go fishing this month because you have that job thing and your family and all the other things, then get on those other websites and start to figure out how to dissect the water and all that other stuff. But if you want to know where to go tomorrow on your boat and go catch fish, you call Pablo or you call Justin. Are you call Al? Are you call me? We answer the phone because you're members of our website and we tell you exactly where to go and then you don't have to suck anymore, right? Pablo, does anybody ever call you? Oh yeah, I get called, texted all the time. Um, you know, we've got a lot a lot of people um, return clients, obviously, Saltwater Guide members. Um, Mr. Cutter, he already booked two trips for the summer. And yeah, just a bunch of people are always calling me, hit me up. Like, what should I do for this? What should I do for that? Or, um, the, I love it when they call me when I'm out in the water and I'll just tell them to zip over where I'm at. Um, or I'll try to zip over where they're at and just try to give them some pointers. And it's funny when, you know, I go to one of my honey holes and then I'll see somebody like Tim Ogilvie just posted up there. I'm like, how's this guy on my rock, man? Like, who's this? Oh, it's Tim. <laughs> You know, I, I mean, I love that stuff and it's, it's such a great community and yeah, people call me and text me all the time. So I do my best to get immediately back to them. <clears throat> yeah, exactly what John Stanley just said. And the website's relevant all year round gang. If you want to be successful when you go lobster fishing, we were on it. The guy I'm going to bring talk, start talking to here in a minute. He was on it. Like nobody's business. He blew me and Al and Pablo away. We were just lucky to be around him because he set a record this year. That's going to probably won't be broken for a long time. He spoiled a lot of people at over 60 phenomenal trips this year. Hoop netting over 2,100 legal lobsters on his boat. And it's all was live. So people, Likes to talk a lot of crap and tell you about all the things they did. But Justin was going live every night. We all got to watch it. That probably the thing I missed the most the last few weeks is no more live hoop net trips at night. I actually have to talk to Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> but Pablo, let everybody know that phone number I threw up on there is not how to get a hold of Pablo. You guys want to get a hold of Pablo. He runs a great operation out of Mission Bay. You can charter him or you can hire him to come with you on your boat. Give him an idea how to get a hold of you. Yeah, you can uh, call me at 619-431-3070. And you can find me on uh, FernandezCharters.com <clears throat> or at FernandezCharters on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you, Pablo. Gang, it's Promar Ahi USA Monday. We always talk about some Promar products on Monday. Today's no different. We're talking some cool Promar products today. And I want you to see, this is a cool little bait scoop they just got, that I just got a hold of. They've probably been doing it for a while, but I got it up at the show. It's a very small little bait scoop for those of you at the smaller tanks. This thing will fit pretty much anywhere. It's a great bait scoop to have as a reserve bait scoop on your boat because I don't know if you've ever had one of your clients throw a bait scoop over, Al, but I have had it happen a lot of times, especially it's adults. Children, not so much. They listen. They do exactly what we tell them. It's them adults that know everything seem to always throw my bait scoop over. So you want to have a handful of these on your boat. Go to the Promar website and... Uh, Type in YSWG, the number 22, to get yourself a handful of bait scoops. It's season's time. It's the time. You make sure you got your landing net. Go over to Promar. Look at all the cool things that they have over there. 
And then we're going to show you the video about the squid. There's people that probably haven't seen it yet. I don't know who that could be, but we'll show it to you one more time because it's a pretty cool video. It'll help you to catch bait when no one else is catching bait. Insane. This new net that Promar made, you throw it down below the squid that won't float and you pull it right through the middle of that squid and look at, there you go. Got enough squid to fish with for the day. That's all I would need for a good day of sea bass fishing or yellowtail fishing. You throw that thing in the water four or five more times, your bait tank's full. Yeah, you got to check that out. That That is going to change everything. And like Justin said, you can use it on the dock too to catch jack smelt. Whatever kind of bait fish are hovering around behind your boat at the dock. If your boat's in the dock like Al or Pablo or Justin, your boat's in the dock. That's a that's an area where you can catch lots of bait before you even leave. And with that net, it'll make it real simple. Sprinkle some breadcrumbs on the surface of the water like Rylan does on his How to Catch Bait video. And you drag that net through there and you probably be pretty dang successful. So grab that QR code if you're thinking. You want to get some products, gang? We'll leave it up there for a couple more seconds. And then it's time. We're bringing in the man, Justin. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, everyone. How are you? We're good, man. Welcome. Very good. Very good. And what's going on in Justin's world? People want to know. You got a new fence yet? <clears throat> no, nope, not yet. We're working on it. So the insurance company, well, it's a really long story, but it's going to get fixed. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Really long story short, we're talking about fit, uh, fishing, not fencing. <laughs> so we will talk about fishing. <laughs> so, you know, I, I really like that saying that you said, Dave. I think you need to make some coffee mugs or shirts about it. It's limits and minutes. Limits and that, minutes. You said that one time on one of the live shows or something like that. And your, your saying was limits and minutes. That's a great saying. Perfect. Yeah, we do pull that off sometimes, don't we? Yeah. It happens quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit. But yeah, there's a lot of um, cool stuff going on right now. Um, Promar is coming out with a new product. We'll announce it tomorrow. So you guys right there, Dave, Pablo, Al, that know about it, we'll be announcing it tomorrow. It's a new product with Promar. There's also another new product with Promar coming out at the end of this month, as well as the Ahi GT4 line, which is the fluorocarbon. So make sure you get yourself some of that. That's what I've been using on my boat the entire time. There you go. There's some right there. Big Al's got a spool. Yep. Yeah. It comes I so. Yeah, stuff. It's actually really good. Really, really good. So it hasn't. I, it hasn't broke on me yet. So that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. But yeah, it's a really good line. It's what I've been using for about six or seven months now on the boat. I've been test dummying it on different kinds of fish as well as thresher sharks and so on and so on. Um, but did, did you guys hear about what's going on? So I, I know all these captains all the way down into Mexico. Um, and I just got word that there was a whole bunch of red crab heading up this way. A lot. And I mean a ton. And I've seen some other comments on Facebook pages that were saying, oh, where's the bluefin? Where's the bluefin? Seriously, who cares? But let me tell you where they're at. <laughs> but, so we have all this high pressure and cold weather getting pushed from the northwest right it's coming down that is pushing those bluefin down not down as in further south but down in water columns so they're dropping down deeper and they're also probably getting pushed down further south so that's why no one's hearing about these bluefin as soon as all this crazy weather goes by and things start warming up we're going to start seeing those tuna more and more um, but the bluefin can be a little finicky on weather wise. And right now the high pressure and also the cold fronts that we're getting, that's just pushing them down right now. On the other hand, there is a ton of red crab. So what does that tell you? What kind of, what color lures are we going to be using this year? Red. red. <laughs> Absolutely. Red. So everyone get your red lures. If you want to be successful, red, red, red red and then the other thing that i noticed that i've been out a few times last week um before the storm came again but the thing that i noticed is there is anchovy sardines and mackerel all over the freaking place i mean it is flooded with bait of all different 
So I seen um, baby anchovies. Perfect, right? Perfect. If there are tiny, tiny micro chovies, sardines everywhere, as far as you can see, and mackerel. It was unreal. So that means this year is going to be a really, really good year. Um, yes. Sorry. Yeah, they follow the food game. You'll always find the fish where you follow the groceries. Something that I want you to see. Now, Pablo does this every Thursday. Justin does this every Thursday. Al does this every Thursday. Sonny does this every Thursday. And I do this every Thursday. We cover the Southern California bite from the Channel Islands down to the Coronado Islands, in the bays, outside the bays, at the islands. Wherever you're thinking about you're going to go fishing, we make a game plan for you on the website every Thursday that's going to cover the area that you want to fish in. Now, I'm just going to show you a little bit, and this is no different. This is how Al does it. This is how Pablo does it. I didn't pick Justin because he's my favorite, so the two of you just calm down, <laughs> but watch. Game plan for this weekend, actually for Friday, because Saturday and Sunday is going to be blowing out and raining like heck, so only go out on Friday if you have a desire to go out, and I'll show you what's biting and where. We're going to be catching halibut. Sheep's head, whitefish, and sculpin, and the occasional large sand bass. Here we go. San Pedro area. This is the lighthouse right here, which is Angel's Gate. You can come out of Angel's Gate. You can see that green buoy. Same area. That this was is biting. what happens when you follow the plan. It's we lay it out there pretty good for area you. Area is biting as well for sheep's head. A ton of white fish. When you're going for halibut, I would prefer using the smaller sardines. You're going to get a mix of the smaller and the bigger sardines. Wouldn't that be cool if I showed you exactly those spots? But then that would kind of piss off the other 4,000 people that are actual members of the website. But if you want a game plan like that, and with the, but we actually finish it up with the real numbers and where the spots are, and like Jack who's going to be on our show tomorrow. He'll explain to you a little bit more about how he puts together his game plans. When he goes fishing, he calls Pablo or Justin or Al or myself. And Jack follows exactly what we tell him. And you saw him with that big giant halibut. That came directly out of Justin Botrell's game plan, gang. So that is what you get over at your Saltwater Guide. It's the most unbelievable website you've ever seen. And then, Justin, just talk about community a little bit. Yeah, so the community is one like no other. There's no other website like your Saltwater Guide. <clears throat> Everyone shares what they're doing. There's no negativity. Um, we share what we're doing while we're on the water as well. So we'll um, network with each other and communicate, especially when everyone wants to go for those big old tuna. Um, they want to go offshore. They can't seem to find it. They just call us on the radio, which on the game plans, we'll set a certain radio channel. That only the Your Saltwater Guide members will be working on. Same with at Catalina. So if you're at Catalina and you're struggling, and I'm at Catalina, or Al's at Catalina, or Pablo's at Catalina, or anyone that we know is at Catalina, you can call them on that certain radio channel and say, hey, how are you doing over there? Oh, I'm in a wide open yellowtail bite, or wide open white sea bass bite, or you know the calicos are eating the paint off the boat. We can then invite you in, which no one invites you in anymore anywhere you go invite you in and you could fish right next to me i as long as you're a member you could fish right next to me everyone else i kind of scare them and they get away <laughs> that's just the way that i do it so yeah we we all work together everyone is a big family we're a giant giant family of your saltwater guide members and it's pretty cool it's one like no other i'll tell you that and let me explain a little bit more about that for those of you that are like, well, wait a minute, doesn't everybody share? Well, my good buddy Devin Cruz is on here. Dave Burris is on here. Big Al's been doing this as long as I have. The one thing, and Al's a tournament bass fisherman, the one thing fishermen do not do ever is share where they're catching their fish at. That's just taboo. If you got caught sharing when we were young in the industry, you would be blackballed from the industry. And then 25 years ago, I started seeing people selling their boats and I saw them I, reading stuff online about how there's no fish in the ocean or there's no fish at Dixon Lake or there's no fish at this lake or that lake. And I went, wait a minute, 
everywhere I go, there's plenty of fish, but the problem is no one's willing to share. So I started helping out some guys building a couple other websites and I gave my information to all of them and we started sharing information. I made those how those game those uh hotspot videos back in 1989 on VHS tape. I know a lot of you weren't even born yet. This is how much of a sellout Captain Dave is. He was giving that stuff away <laughs> back in 1989. Oh my gosh. Horrible, horrible, horrible human being I am. I ruined fishing. And then what happened is private boaters started to put together these plans. And then a lot of big people, Mark Wish and I were the first two guys to give out spots. And, and Mark sold books and I sold VHS tapes. And we were the two most hated people in the industry, by the industry. But you know who loved us? The private boaters. We've taken all that great energy and all that great stuff that we did back in 89 and we've done it and we've done it better than anybody. And we put together the most comprehensive website for fishermen and all the information is created by fishermen that are out fishing every day. And Pablo gets on a spot of fish. He's more than happy to share it with you. He's more than happy to have you come in and help him get rid of all those. We're trying to exterminate the last fish. So we need everybody to help us. But what I'm trying to tell you, gang, is there is a cleaner, softer, kinder way. When I read these posts from people that don't like me and they say, oh, Dave, you should make them figure it out like I had to. How dumb. That is like probably one of the most dumbest statements. I couldn't even imagine Al dropping me off at the airport on Saturday and me hoping that that pilot figures out how to fly that jet with me on it, try to figure it out on his own. <laughs> no, I want that guy to go to a bunch of school and I want him to know exactly how to fly that plane and land that plane. Same thing when you go out fishing on your boat. You don't want to try to have Al figure it out on his own that day when you go fishing. Why do you want to try to figure it out on your own when you can just give Al a few bucks or give Pablo a few bucks or give Justin and they're going to come with you on your boat? All those great electronics you talked your husband or wife into letting you buy, the guy that sold them to you, he does not know how to use them. Yeah, well, you said he did. Well, I guarantee you look at him. His hands are soft, super soft. He's never been out on the ocean. He doesn't know how to use the machine. He doesn't know how to use it to go catch fish. He doesn't know. How, I'm sorry. I'm just throwing, I'm just ripping covers off of everyone right now. These are the guys you want to hire. When you shake Al's hand, you go, oh, this is a fisherman. His hand's all rough and tough and he's strong. <laughs> it's, it's not like the guy that sold you the electronics that scared you to death to touch it because he might get a paper cut. It's just a different thing, gang. Hey, Dave, a really good example about what you're talking about right now is what if you flew up from Cabo? I had the Stringari hooked to the back of my Ford truck and I said, all right, here you go. I'll pick you up at three o'clock. That was incredible. <laughs> so, I mean, the homework, I mean, I mean, it, 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 it'd take you weeks and weeks to figure out what's going on out there. So. Years and years, not weeks. And <laughs> years and years. And I guarantee you, I'm not going to go up there tomorrow and jump on my boat and go where Al was because that water's so skinny back in there. And there's so many things to hit. And there's so much stuff to do. You got to get, you have to have knowledge. So it's just like when Pablo took those guys to Clemente. Right. There's so many things to hit over at Clemente. But they got Pablo on the boat. They know they're not going to hit. Now they got a good idea of what the island's about and what to do when they get there. Okay, don't try to figure this stuff out on your own. Call these guys. Hey, another cool, another cool thing. I used to do them a lot back in the day. And I would get people from new boat owners to, to medium offshore fishing guys. And it's a really good tool for new boat owners, too, because, man, you teach them how to back it in. You teach them how to put the trailer in the water the right depth. You do a bunch of approaches at the dock. You get them comfortable so they're not hitting boats. Sit in their boat, and you take the map, and you download a million spots, so all, all the important stuff in their meter. Then the, the, There's five hours gone right there. You know what I mean? So and all the way to gear, and people want to buy gear. They don't have any gear. You spend time with them hooking them up with the right stuff and and then you know all the offshore type of fishing how to i mean it's 
it's totally worth the money. Yeah, absolutely. I never had anybody after a trip go, damn, I wish I hadn't learned all that. <laughs> right. <clears throat> uh, darn it. I wish I hadn't learned all that. Something that's really cool is Justin's going to make an announcement right now. That he's going to open up two days. He's got some people coming. He was going to open up tomorrow, but he's got some people coming to help him with this fence. Are you going to do an open party trip Wednesday and Thursday? I am. So open party trip. We're going to go local, local half day. What we're going to do is the game plan is we're going to go for a halibut for about an hour in the morning. And then we'll go offshore a little bit to the rockfish grounds, load up the rockfish, and then we'll come back and do another hour drift for halibut again. Hopefully getting some big giant barn door halibut in, on the boat. <laughs> so um, that's what the plan is. It's $200 per person, and I need four to go. So Wednesday and Thursday. And the weather is supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to be like in the 70s and flat, no wind got a really good chance of having a good time and another thing when you go with these guys on their boat they're going to take the time to explain to you what they're doing and help you so if you don't have time to take them on your boat go with them on their boats and go up and sh you can go up and sit down with justin in the bridge you can go sit down with al in his bridge you can sit down with pablo in his bridge and you can ask them questions and start to learn how they're putting together their day and what's going on I don't know too many charter boats that have an open wheelhouse deal where you can just come up and sit down and start asking questions about fishing. Most guys are going to hold it so close to their chest. And the ones that are not holding it close, they don't even know what they're doing anyway. 99.9% .9 of these charter boat captains have no idea what they're doing. Al and I talked about it the other day. There is, and what really pisses Pablo, Justin, and Al and myself off is all these guys that are out there stealing money from us and when you're running illegal charters you're stealing money so if you see justin's 200 bucks you see al's going out for 1500 or two thousand dollars and then there's another boat there that's doing it for a grand be very cautious the guy probably has no safety equipment doesn't have a captain's license doesn't have any insurance there's a lot of scuzzy operations now everybody that has a boat all of a sudden now is a charter boat captain because those stupid bluefin that take almost zero talent to catch <laughs> they, they they don't take any talent listen i used to catch them by the hundreds that's how dumb they are and you know i have zero talent mm -hmm. so you think <laughs> oh i just want to catch a bluefin well you're not going to learn anything by putting a dead flying fish out on a bobber <laughs> Al will tell you in the lake, <laughs> the cat fishermen, those guys, that's what bluefin fishing is. You're, but we understand there's some of you out there, oh, I just want a big bluefin. We'll take you. <laughs> We've got no problem taking you. We will take you out there. We will catch you a big giant bluefin so you can show all your friends and go tell the story how this fish kicked the crap out of you. We have no problem with that. But you know what's really cool about living in California? Calico bass, sand bass, all the different kinds of sharks, yellowtail, white sea bass, halibut, all the stuff that lives here year round, that's where the bread and butter is at your saltwater guy. That's what you're going to get when you hire these guys. They're good. Al, Justin, Pablo, they can catch the bluefin as good as the superstars of bluefin fishing. The guys that have been doing it since 2015, and now they're the very best fishermen on the planet. Because they've been doing it for since 2015. My, I, I want. I have a pair of socks that are older than these guys that have just learned how to catch bluefin. I'm just saying, if you want to have a good time and learn how to do a bunch of different stuff, go with Pablo, Justin, or or Al on their boats, or take them with you on your boats, gang. I cannot emphasize this enough because come June, when you didn't take advantage of this. You're going to call Al up and you're going to go, hey, Al, how about June 14th? He's going to go, <laughs> are you, what, what? I don't have any dates available now until October, honey. And and if you don't think that's true, you better look at the history books, gang. All holy heck's going to break loose. When Justin said there's red crabs, yeah, I've seen it from the divers. I've already seen the pictures. I know that the bottom is just covered in red crabs all over Southern California. 
That means one thing, El Nino, hang on to your hats. And if you think you're going to come, well, I'm just going to hang on and we'll see what happens. You don't need to wait to see what happens. 49 years of doing it at the highest level, I can promise you, I can tell you what's going to happen. We're going to have lots of yellowtail, lots of yellowtail in May. As soon as this weather straightens out, you're going to have lots of yellowtail, and you're going to do that until June. And then in June, you're going to have pretty good bass fishing, and the barracuda are going to show up, and you're going to have pretty fun fishing for a little bit. Then the water is going to get extremely warm in the middle of June, and then it'll be yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, dorado, yellowtail, and good luck. Getting on a boat and good luck getting on a boat. So yeah, if, it gets, yeah, if it gets hot enough, you might even get some Wahoo up here again. Yeah, they say that every year. It happened yeah. once in my lifetime. So I'm right. not hanging my hat. But if you want to buy a bunch of Wahoo lures, for wa I can sell you the crap out of them. All right. right. We'll right. sell you whatever. But, Just um, catch the Wahoo on those Mad Max. It'll be all right. Yeah, exactly. 1,400 miles an hour. So um, I'm going to hit a topic on really quick. So over last week, this guy um, called me up. He's not on here, um, so I could talk about him. No, I'm not going to talk bad. Um, he called me and asked me, his friends are coming out from Japan, and they want to do six-day tuna trip. I said, all right, cool, no problem. He's like, can you take us out for six days? I said, yeah, I'll take you out one day, and I'll take you out the next day, then I'll take you out the next day. But we're going to come back to the doctor who said, oh, you don't do it overnight. I said, no, I don't, because now I need two captains. I need to charge way more money because the captain wants to get paid. So on and so on and so on. But he said, the next question is, which I hear this all the time, and please, everyone listen, please. He said, will we be fishing Tanner Bank? I said, no. Oh, well, they don't want to go. I said, why? Oh, because they want to go to Tanner Bank. So everyone needs to get off of the topic of Tanner Bank. Tanner Bank isn't what everyone thinks it is. The only reason why you hear about Tanner Bank is because two sport boats caught bluefin there. Woohoo! Guess what else? I haven't fished Tanner Bank in over six years. And I catch more bluefin than a lot of the other guys catch. We don't even go past 35 miles offshore. So everyone, please get off the topic of Tanner Bank. Tanner Bank is nothing but where the bluefin were, and then the next day aren't. Then they're somewhere else. They have tails. They swim. They swim through currents. They swim <laughs> through uh, what we call channels in the water and different temperature breaks. They don't stick at Tanner. Tanner is nothing. It's nothing. So please get off the topic of Tanner. Tanner, everyone, everyone, everyone wants to fish Tanner for some reason and. The, the tuna are there seriously about two months out of the year. <clears throat> if that. Right, off and on. I get a lot of people wanting to fish Mexico, quote, unquote, Mexico. Hey, can we go to Mexico? I said, I'll tell you what. If the fish are down there, we're going to Mexico. If the fish are west, we're going west. If the fish are north, we're going north. Right. We're going to go where the fish are. So you guys are too nice. You want to hear how I handle that? <laughs> I was trying to be nice in case he did. I'll watch take it. you there. I'll take you there, but you ain't gonna catch nothing. I know. I was just there. If you came on my boat and asked, told me where you wanted to go, I would be blown away. I would go, okay, this is gonna be great. We're not gonna have to worry about catching any fish. We're not gonna get the boat <laughs> dirty. It's, it's gonna be awesome. I will go wherever you want to go. I don't even know why you're here, though. If you already know where you want, why why are you on my boat? People are standing in line to go fish with me because they want to know where I'm. They want to know what I know, and now you guys want me to take you to where you want to go. When was the last time you were out? Oh, we went fishing two years ago with Roy on the Royal Polaris. I'm like, well, this is not two years ago. It was a totally different day. <clears throat> Absolutely ridiculous. People want to come on the boat and tell you where to go. Hopefully, our screening process eliminates them before they get there. Right. Because if you're wanting to come on our boats and tell us where to go, that's pretty silly. Absolutely ridiculous. But I know your sister's brother's aunt's cousin caught a fish out on the Tanner <laughs> one. So that's probably where you want to go. You won't believe how many people come down here to Cabo and want to go to the – I want to go to the Golden Gate. Okay. All we got to do is go four miles out. Five miles out, hope it's kind of foggy or kind of overcast. They can't see land. We could tell them they're on the Golden Gate. We could tell them we're on the Tanner. We could tell them they're anywhere. It's all looks exactly the same. It all looks like water. Yeah. 
That is so true. It's so funny. You want to go to the Tanner Bank? Why? It's 89 miles one way with 0.0 protection. It's in the middle of the the next piece of land past the Tanner Bank is called China. (laughs) (laughs) Guys are absolutely ridiculous. I wouldn't want to go to the Tanner Bank, period, because it sucks out there. It's rough. It's cold. It's miserable. And to catch a tuna, I'll wait till they're in between Catalina and the beach, and we'll do just fine. We'll do just fine. But if you got a burning desire to go to the Tanner, I wouldn't go out there on a boat less than 65 feet. And then it's going to be kind of iffy, too. And Kelly ain't going unless the boat's got a sea keeper. (laughs) Tanner Bank's no glorious place, gang. No. The highest it comes up to is nine fathoms. So it's 54 feet deep on the highest part of it. So you're going to see absolutely nothing. I've never been there where the water was clean enough to see 54 feet down and see the bottom of the bank. So I don't really know what the burning desire to go to there. I've seen so many people ask me, Captain Dave, can we go to the 14 mile bank today? No. Do you want to catch rockfish? Well, no, we're open for, why do you want to go to the 14? Oh, well, my brother's sister's aunt was reading an article on the airplane when we flew out here and Jim, and I go, what year was that? You go, oh, 1984, that article was written. Huh. I'll bet you those tuna swam off of it. So really quick. So Devin asked who started the rant. I did. No, <laughs> no. Uh, really quick. So the same guy that asked me this too, I, I don't want to talk about it or anything. He hired, before he hired me to come on his boat last year, he um, hired a guy, a, a guide who he found out later wasn't a guide ran his boat into the break wall at Long Beach, literally. His like $400,000 boat right into the break wall and he had to have $130,000 of damage done, um, getting it replaced. $130,000, crazy. That was a guide. So I just wanted to mention, I thought that was pretty crazy. But yeah, that, that's what you hire. When you don't hire a real licensed guide, you don't know, like Dave says, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know if they even have boating experience. Obviously, this guy is just some Yahoo trying to collect money. Um, but you don't know what kind of experience they have. So that's where you're getting. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. And the one thing about having Al or Pablo or Justin on your boat, when they come out on your boat, they're not planning on driving your boat. That's not what they're there for. If you want them to drive, they will. But what they were hoping to do is teach you how to drive, how to park on the spots, how to better use your boat. Justin standing at your steering wheel on your boat won't help you a lot. Al standing there won't help you a lot. Now, when it comes to pulling hoop nets or docking or pulling up to the bait barge or bumming bait from another boat, there's a time to have Al or Pablo or Justin driving your boat. But when we're out with you on your boat, we want you to do all of this stuff. We just want to sit back and help you and teach you and talk to you and get you through it. We're not hoping to come on your boat and drive your boat for the day. We we have, we have all have enough time behind the wheel. We just want you to be comfortable on your boat when we're not there. So understand that when you go with Pablo or Justin or Al and you bring them as a guide on your boat, they're going to teach you how to fish on your boat. Yeah. Absolutely, especially when the fog comes in, we might get on the wheel too. <laughs> yeah, and, and a great example also that everyone can see is I went live for the lobster tournament and uh, where we got second place, thank you very much. We're the first losers. But um, <laughs> so I went live on the lobster tournament and the guy I was with, I let him drive the boat the majority of the time. Only time I didn't let him drive the boat was when we were backing down on the nets just because I wanted to hurry up and go, 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 go. But the gentleman I was with, I let him drive his boat at whatever speed he wanted to go at 350,000 miles an hour in the middle of the night. But if you notice what I was doing is I was keeping an eye on the surroundings to make sure that we were not in trouble at all at any time. And if you notice what I was telling him on the live show as well, is I was telling him different obstacles to look at um, that were in the water and how to keep an eye on those and which way to head the boat and which way to turn, so on and so on, red and red and green, blah, 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 yellow, all these colors and what we're looking for while he's driving. So he keeps a safe, um, 
I don't know the word I'm looking for, but a safe passage through any kind of um, harbor or marina. So. No, that's exactly what you were doing. I was watching you the whole time. You were doing exactly what you were supposed to be doing. Al, let everybody know real quick. We're coming into this warm water season. The wind's going to stop blowing. It looks really good. Justin and I looked at windy yesterday. It looks like it's going to be really good for the next eight, nine days. Water temperatures are going to start to heat up. That back bay is going to not bite Come when the water gets too hot. So, guys, take advantage of this. You got a small boat. You get Al out there with your boat. He's going to show you all his tricks, which you're not going to find from anybody else. And he's going to come with you on your boat. But explain to them how short this season could be. Uh, it could be another eight weeks or so, nine weeks, ten weeks, you know. Like like I said, it'll still bite, but it's not. They're not all bunched up, you know. So it's imperative to get out there sooner than later, wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. And the weather, I looked at it when you were here, and the weather's beautiful for like another nine or ten days, for sure. Yeah, the four of us are going to be super busy come Thursday. We're going to have to put together some real honest-to-God game plans. We can't say, hey, don't go this weekend. <laughs> Finally, it's not going to blow. It's not going to rain. It looks like it could be a really fun weekend to go fishing, and there could be all kinds of weird stuff going on besides having the rockfish to catch. Also, gang, do yourself a favor. Go walk around your marina or walk around your docks or walk around or get on the internet and start asking people if they'll give you their rockfish spots and let me know how that works out for you. Hey, my close friends won't even do that to me. They're like, hell no, we ain't giving you those. And you come on our website, gang, we give you the rockfish spots. We give you the lobster spots. Then you still can't figure it out. You call Pablo or you call Al or then you call Justin. And those guys pinpoint you right on the spot while you're out on your boat. How weird is that? Right. And another thing about the temperature and the bay stuff, the bass, the bass and stuff like that bite all year. But when it starts to get heated up, then then if they're on their boat, I can take them doing some pretty cool topwater corvina fishing, too. So we caught one at the dock the other day. I was down there messing with the detailer guy this morning and caught another one. So they're starting to to uh, filter in and starting to get active. Wow, gang. Kate's on the show. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. wow. We're up Hi, guys. It. Hello, hello. Okay. Hello, hello. Kate, how are you? Good. How are you guys? We're very honored Great. to have you as part of the show right now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm that's, to be on the show. <laughs> that's definitely the better half of Pablo. Yeah, let me, let me move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, gang, let's go through Pablo, Justin, and Al. Let's give our phone numbers. Let's get everybody fired up. Let's get some people out fishing. Gang, call these guys. Pop Kate, give Pablo's number. <laughs> he doesn't even know my number. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> I'll get it for her. I'll I'll do it in Kate's voice. Move your mouth. Move your mouth. 619 431. 3070. Wow, Kate, that was awesome. Perfect. That's how you're going to get a hold of Pablo and his website is Fernandez Charters. You can check him out. There's his QR code if you want to grab it right there. You can check out Pablo right there. Give him a call. And then we got Justin right here. Justin, let him know this. Listen, gang. He's going to be with the fencers tomorrow, but his trip, the two trips are going to fill up quick. If you want to go have fun with Justin and learn all the spots where he's catching all his fish, jump on this open party trip. Go. So open party trip on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, I have three spots now open. Someone just booked one spot. Give me a call or text 951-703-9442. I'm going to answer a couple questions really quick. There was about an electric reel. So last week I was fishing and one of the gentlemen that came on the boat had a neck injury and he bought an electric reel. It was a 500, Tanacom 500, I think it was. Um, yes, Jeanette, I'm gonna answer that in just a second. So <laughs> 500, and he was pulling up rockfish like no other and it was doing very well. So yeah, some people use electric reels, some people don't. 
the area I fish is in between 200, actually 150 feet and 300 feet. So it's not too deep. It's not too out of control. I don't like fishing too deep. Um, but yeah, there's that. And yes, I'll be going live on Wednesday and Thursday as long as the trips fill up. I'll be going live. And also to let everyone know, I have Starlink. So Starlink is going to get installed on the boat. We'll be doing the Starlink here pretty soon. So that means we'll be live everywhere on the water for every kind of fishing you've ever wanted to see. So thank you. Thank you. Pretty crazy. Al Clowers, let them know how they're going to get a hold of you to come with them on their boat right now. They can call me direct at 619-800-FISH or contact me at my website through my site, captainclowers.com or Instagram and Facebook, Captain Clowers. Yep, and check out Bowline Sport Fishing or check out Fernandez charters they're all on instagram they're all on facebook they're all trying to grab as many followers as they can they're trying to catch up to me we only got six hundred eighty thousand right now so we're kind of lagging gang it's going to be this week probably the next two days we're going to hit eighty thousand follow eighty thousand fall eighty yeah it's hard hard to say eighty thousand on instagram probably we're at 79,644 right now on Instagram. I can't even believe it. So share with your friends. Share with everybody. Me and Marley need more followers. Marley! There he is, Marley. Marley. He says Pablo needs Starlink. Pablo needs to go live. I know. Pablo needs to go live. Pablo's just afraid to go live because he doesn't want Dave yelling at him the whole time. <laughs> you, gotta, you have to just get used to it. I know. That's I am, I am getting used to it. Pretty cool. You'll so only, only yell it to uh, improve what you're doing. That's it. <laughs> gang, I when you think it. about spending your hard-earned money to go on a boat to go fishing with someone, understand right here you got four people that you know now and you talk to all the time. These are all families that need you to help support us. We all need you guys. So think about it the you next time you're thinking about going on a boat and spending your hard-earned money. Try try one of us. Give us a chance. Give us a chance to make you feel at home and part of the family. Give us a chance, please, because these are all families. You see Kate, Pablo, that's a family. Over there, you've seen Amanda with Justin. You, you saw Al and his wife on the show and his little girl. These are real families. These are real people that need your support. So help us out, gang. Think about us when we're you're thinking about going fishing. Let us all know. We want to help you. Or just yes. if you if you want to go with someone else, call us. We'll be more than happy to tell you all about the other boats. I'll tell you exactly who the guy is and everything about him. If you want to know the inside information on all these other captains. We pretty much got the insight on them. I'll let you know if it's the boat you should go on or you shouldn't go on. Just call me at 949-374-0786. Each one of us answer our phones and we'll talk to you. There's no other service out there where you get to talk to the guys. Do not go out there on the water and try to figure this out on your own. It will absolutely suck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do it their way. <laughs> yes, it will. And any other questions? I think there's some other questions that were asked a while ago. We can cruise. We can stay as long as you guys want. I got nowhere to go. Answer questions if you see them on there, guys. What? Are, any other questions? Anyone have any other questions? Let me scroll on this thing. I know got everything. Go. some people were asking. You get Jeanette's. Oh, yeah. You got Jeanette's live. You got Tim Ogilvy's electric reel. Um. What else? Hey, uh, on the electric reel, I got a little tip. If they want to bring an electric reel, just make sure they're not lugging a battery with them or something. Uh, <laughs> you know, like a big car battery. They make all those cool little batteries that hook onto the, the rod, you know? Yeah, that's that's what um, the gentleman brought last week. But another thing cool, like what I have on my boat, is I have a um, cord. Oh, right, it's right. Plug in, it's for those Tanacom reels. It'll right. plug into yeah. the back of your reel. Right. And give you power off my boat. So, um, Brent asked earlier, Sea Wolf 13, um, for personal, oh, shoot, some of them. where'd it go? 
Um, do we check when we go on other people's boats? Do we check to see if they're Coast Guard approved equipment? We do go through everything. We're not Coast Guard, so we do go through everything really quick just to make sure that we're all going to be safe on your boat out in the water, especially when we go offshore. We want to make sure that everything is up to date and up to par. So if something does happen because you never know if something's going to happen on the water. You just never, ever know. And it happens in a split second. Um, we do make sure that you have all life jackets, fire extinguishers, flares, and so on and so on on your boat, whistles, horns. And we make sure that those are up to par. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say, Jake. The reason why people bring electric reels is because sometimes – People have arthritis. Sometimes people are missing arms or legs. Sometimes there's just disabilities that come up. And what we're trying to do is make sure that everybody gets a chance to go fishing. We know that, Jake, your boat's bigger than ours and you reel up fish way better than all of us. But some of us can't quite do it. So we have electric reels, just like your your uh, fish are way bigger than all of ours and you fish rockfish better than all of us, but some of us just need a little bit of help sometimes. We're just here to make sure everybody has as much fun as they possibly can. Yeah. A lot of the people with uh, disabilities or older people, you know, they just can't do it. Arthritis in the hands, um, you, just some kind of disability or older people will use those electric reels. I personally won't fish past 400 feet without an electric reel. That's just me because I don't like reeling up for freaking ever. Um, unless there's a big gigantic fish on there that's over 100 pounds. That's just me. And I don't hey, like picking up one pound of weight, though. It's kind of ridiculous. Just for educational purpose, I'm not sponsored by no electric reel battery company or nothing, but these are these are little batteries <laughs> that I use on my, electric, on my electric reels. You can walk all over the boat, and they're pretty uh, streamlined where that, those straps just strap right on <clears> your, <throat> your rod, and you plug them in, and this thing will last... I've had them the last two days on the kite. I got, I got to answer this comment Jake just made. Jake, if you have the ability to watch somebody on a video and, and assume right away that they're perfect, I want you to tell me what the lottery numbers are, sir, because I don't know how you can watch a video and understand that someone's perfect, but – there's only one perfect person, and that's your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hanson. So the rest of those people couldn't possibly be perfect. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so just like <laughs> Anthony right there said, he, he was fishing in San Clemente Island. Yeah, past 300 feet. I mean, I get tired really, and I reeled in a million fish. My hands just started getting all cramped up, and I'm starting to reel past there. So... Yeah, it just helps. Yeah, heart. If you have any kind of, any kind of, um, if you have heart disease or anything, any kind of handicap at all, the electric reel is by far the best thing for you. And they make a five hundred, a seven fifty, and a one thousand. Yeah, it's good to have because you're gonna then you're gonna turn it around. You're gonna use it on your kite. Yeah. So use it for rockfish now and then just whip it around and use it to bring in your kite when you're catching those big giant bluefin. But you know what's going to be really fun this summer? We're going to be able to catch those yellowfin tuna on the kite too and there's going to be lots of them caught on the dolphin pods and if you fl skip that rubber flying fish through a pot of dolphin, you'll be blown away. But we have videos about all that and we'll be keeping you up to date and make sure you guys, those of you that are members watch this game plan this weekend coming up because it's going to be incredible. There's so much stuff going to be happening. and so many cool things to do. And we'll probably start covering the Coronado islands again, because there'll be a lot of boats down there this week. A lot of the San Diego boats are sending boats out to go fish this week at the Coronado. So someone's going to stumble into those yellowtail and the whole season's going to explode after this weekend. So get ready. Check out our website, yoursaltwaterguide.com, gang. Check out all these great guides we have. Let's make their phones ring. Let's show the love. And the other thing is, is if everyone looks at the weather, I look at a lot of the weather. Um, we're, we're coming into a low, a low pressure. When we get the low pressure is when the fish start biting. Now you can look at, someone asked also earlier about currents, or not currents, but tides. High tide, what do they prefer, a high tide or low tide in the um, slack tide in the morning? I prefer a high slack in the morning time. Um, that's when I think the fish bite the best, but that's just me from seeing what I see. Dave, 
well, Dave now will probably know a lot more than I will about that. What do you prefer, high tide or um, low, high slack or low slack in the morning times? When I went fishing with Al, he was telling me that there's either tide as long as there's movement. And if it's good movement, and we were on the incoming and it was insane. It was so. Right. Income. It, well, the day. Three days before that, when I took my grandkids out, there was a seven foot ripper going out and the fish were a lot bigger, but it, my preferred tide in the middle of the bay, bass fishing and stuff is incoming in the morning. Um, but in the back, it doesn't really matter, you know, as, lo as long as you have tides. Now out rock cod fishing, it matters on some rocks want an incoming or depends which way the current's going you know uphill downhill it all matters you can go to a rock and the the, the current's going downhill but you need it to be uphill not get bit and just go go hit a couple other spots and then just time it just right and you go over there and then smoke them you know what i mean so <laughs> uh, tides and current is everything when it comes when it comes to fishing yeah 100 percent hundred percent yeah so so the other thing is is um like i was saying the um the low pressure that we're going to see this week is really going to make those fish start biting and the other thing that i noticed last week is did, did anyone notice on the water that the temperature dropped three degrees that was pretty just, outside <laughs> did you yeah. notice that the temperature dropped three degrees out on the water no, I didn't notice it. Yeah. No, I noticed that it was freezing ass cold when I was there, though, because I kept telling Al how god dang cold it was. I don't know if it's been that cold or not, but it was freezing compared to Cabo. Yeah, we took a little boat ride in that in that slop about two miles back to the ramp, when Dave. It was freezing. <laughs> like, yeah, hey, that whole two miles. You don't want to stand me. on that side of the boat. We're going to get wet. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. yeah. So the, the bait situation in uh, Long Beach and San Pedro. San Pedro has five to seven inch sardines. Um, Nacho Long Beach has uh, four to six inch sardines, and a squid boat is supposed to be going out. Well, I shouldn't be telling anybody this. Go to your saltwater guide. <laughs> Go to your saltwater guide, um, and on the game plan, I'll talk about what's coming up. That's all I got to say. So, yeah. Hey, That's Al, I just got the email from the guy. I guess they, they sent it to you before. I guess you didn't see it. It's supposed to be in your inbox right now. If you open it up, you're oh, going to yeah. be. Cool. Kate will tell you, and Pablo and Justin will tell you. It's pretty cool when you get that email from AFCO, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Al, you're well, going to be I appreciate that. Now. I appreciate that very much. I hardly got any clothes. Kelly got a brand new closet full, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard one to miss. I don't know how I missed it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that something happened, but they resent it, so you should have it. Nice. I got it. And there'll be All right, Al. Have a good afternoon, yeah. buddy. You're going to have fun. Yeah, I got to get with my web guy right after this and then get, get on that site. Get me some new stuff. Call the mechanic and light a fire. And go from there. Is it common to hook up those big cows estimated 100 pounds? That's not a big cow. Cow's <laughs> a cow. The tuna's not a cow until it's 200. Yeah, it's not a cow until over two hundred. But if you want a semi cow, <laughs> a baby cow, <laughs> a baby cow, a calf, a calf. <laughs> you want a calf? Uh, yeah, it's, when you come out on one of our boats, it's very common. Or we come out on yours. I think he was talking about that black sea bass he hooked over at Clemente the other day. Yeah, oh. uh, there's yeah. so many the area, and yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, those those guys are. They're gnarly. <laughs> and they, you can pretty much, we can do what they do back east, like Goliath Glooper thing. We could target them, but it's totally against the law here in California. But if you wanted to fish black sea bass, I know spots where you could go and not even get a bait to the bottom and you'll get one. And they're all 150. Gardens. 
If you go to you Italian go. gardens and <laughs> fish. You can go swim with them there. I've done that a million <laughs> times. You've ever wanted? You're not allowed to go there, everyone. You're not allowed to go there. You're not fish. But yeah, you'll go find all the black sea bass you've ever wanted to see in your life. But they're all over the coast. Yeah. But gang, we're going to wrap this up because Captain Dave's got a bunch of stuff to do. It looks like we're going to get our house and start moving maybe in the next couple of days. So I got stuff to do. I want to thank Pablo, Al, and Justin for being with us today. And Kate, always a pleasure to see you, young lady. Oh, thank you so much. Nice seeing you guys. Hey, real oh, quick, real quick, you. a guy by the, I'm trying to find it, but I can't see it. Um, a guy uh, by the name of Dave asked me if we can fish calicos in Point Loma Kelp. Absolutely. We fish for any fish you want to fish for. <laughs> right now, it's a little tough. Let the water warm up and you can catch hundreds of them. Yeah, Point Loma is not closed. La Jolla, you go up there, yeah, there's a closure there. And don't, yeah, don't quote us because the fish and wildlife could change it at any minute. The whole thing could be closed tomorrow morning when we wake up. We're living in a great time right now. And and so everyone knows the rockfish closure has not been announced yet. And what I found out, I'll just give everyone a little clue of what's going on. California Fish and Wildlife Commission has already put out the 2024 rates. And in the regs, it says everything that was in the regs for last year. They haven't updated it. <clears throat> because they put out the 2024 regs, regulations, it is hard for them to go back and change that without all kinds of difficulty. That's why it's not going through. There's a lot more into it, but that's a really short end of what's going on. It's hard for them to go in and change it, so it has not gone through yet. So you're allowed four vermilions and all the stuff you allowed last year. You're allowed that right now. Right. Hey, I got stopped by the warden real quick the other day in the bay. He checked me for everything, and and I was talking about that. And he goes, he goes, yeah, it hasn't changed yet. It's not. They haven't posted the new regs yet. So. Yeah, they have it. In a in a new a new item that Promar is coming out with will be announced tomorrow. So everyone, stay tuned for tomorrow's show. So a really cool item. Everyone needs one for their boat. Yeah. And uh, we'll bring in. Al and Pablo and Justin tomorrow if they don't get booked up and they'll be here with us. We got a couple of our members going to join us on the show tomorrow and talk about how we changed their lives and how they became friends of ours. And we see each other all over the place. We're going to be bringing in members of the website every Tuesday now for a while because it went over so good last week. And a lot of people really enjoyed listening to the story. So we're going to start doing that on Tuesdays, gang. And then Wednesdays are still with Bill Varney, and then Thursdays are still with the great Kelly girl, and Fridays we bring in a special guest, and this week will be pretty bitching. We're bringing in Bill Batson from Batson Enterprises. This guy is a guru in the rod in the rod world. Dave Burris, you're going to geek out on this one big time. So we got Bill Batson. <laughs> Batson Enterprises coming on with us on Friday. It should be fun. Always fun. Every day the show's fun. But Yep. <laughs> Get ready. Tomorrow's going to be a great day. You guys turn off the news. Everyone's lying. This is the only place you can get the truth. <laughs> I agree. So I'll see you back here tomorrow, gang. Thank All you. Right, everybody. We'll see you later. Have a great up. afternoon.